What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to yet again another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, very briefly looking at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a quick trading update as well as hopping into Facebook's earnings. What did they end up reporting? And their numbers were pretty, pretty solid for this quarter as well as taking a look at some other companies, some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here over the next couple of days heading into the May month of 2019. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content that I'm putting out here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support me and supports the channel in general, and I do appreciate it. Every single one of you guys out there watching, subscribing, hitting the like button, it really does mean a lot to me. So without further ado, let's just hop into it, guys. What ended up happening today in the overall market? Starting off here with the S&P 500, it wasn't really a crazy day, right? We ended up closing the day down about $6.43, which was kind of expected due to the massive green day that we had yesterday. You know, a little pullback here honestly didn't surprise me, right? We ended up closing down about 0.22%. Nothing crazy here on the SPX, just a very minimal pullback. Over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, same thing, right guys? Down the exact percentage, down 0.22% the exact same as the S&P 500, down nearly 60 points here, 59.34 to be exact. And the NASDAQ is up right now $1.50, but this is the future. If we hop over here to the one day, one minute, we'll be able to see exactly where it ended up closing, which is roughly about 32 points below from where we are right now. Roughly, actually, no, not 32, about 19. So it ended up closing the day, you can say, roughly down about 17 points on the NASDAQ. So overall today, guys, in the overall markets, it was a bit of a pullback day, which again, doesn't really surprise me due to the massive green day that we did have yesterday. So going over here back to the S&P 500, we can see that it was just a little pullback day. Again, like I said, just brief consolidation in this range between 29.36 and about 29.26. Really the $10, uh, $10 buffer here on the SPX is where we've been trading. And if we just hop over here and get one of these resistance and support tools we can see you know exactly what I'm talking about right that's pretty much where we're trading right now in the S&P 500 and if we're just going over here on the 184 hour chart very quickly we all know at this point the next resistance that we are going to face right now is the 2940 level which is the all-time high in the S&P 500 from a couple of months ago in the October month in 2018 and that's honestly the level that I'm watching here over these next couple of days with the big name companies reporting earnings to see, are we going to able to push above that level? But with this pullback that we are seeing now, guys, are we going to maybe retest this 2915 level, which was a support, but since we broke out of it, or rather it was a resistance, but since we broke out of it, it's now a new support. This is a level that we could potentially be testing if we you know, happen to pull back again tomorrow. But if we have a green day tomorrow, if a lot of these big name companies that are doing pretty well here after market hours, if they do influence the market positively tomorrow, you know, this could end up sending us two all-time highs. And that's really all I have to say here on the SPX, guys. Nothing crazy. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But if we're just hopping over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, same exact thing, right? We're just trading simply in that horizontal range, that horizontal channel that I've been talking about here over the past couple of videos, and that range is from $26,400 and $26,800. That 400 little uh, dollar buffer range is where we're trading right now, and if we want to test those all-time highs from back in October, guys, at $26,951, we're going to have to break that resistance in the next coming days, weeks, however long it takes. And once we do, if we break that resistance, guys, that's going to be the one-stop shop to those all-time highs, which at this point, if we just take a look on a percentage basis, are around 1.1 to 1.2 percentage points, roughly. 
roughly away from where we are right now. And let's see if we do end up pulling back. The level you're going to have to take a look at on the Dow is going to be around 26,400. If it maintains that level, slowly starts to curl back up. That's just going to be the continuation of the uptrend at that point in the Dow. But again, as of now, we're just simply trading in between, really right in the middle of this channel. Nothing too crazy here on the 24th of April in 2019. So hopping over here to the NASDAQ, guys, again, like we've been talking about over the past couple of days, the NASDAQ has been pushing day in and day out to all-time highs. So if we hop here to the one day, one minute, did we hit an all-time high after market hours? Yes, we hit an all-time high yet again after market hours here in the NASDAQ. And I believe we actually hit an all-time high in the NASDAQ after market hours yesterday, I think. I think that's true. I, I, I don't know 100% if that's correct, but I'm pretty sure it was after market hours. Actually, I can just check it right now. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. Maybe I'm wrong. If we go to the five-day, five-minute, we'll be able to see that a bit closer. Yeah, it does seem like we did hit uh, all-time highs after market hours yesterday so that's two days in a row after market hours all-time highs on the nasdaq and guys again on a technical basis here in terms of the nasdaq we're just day in day out hitting all-time highs we're pushing higher highs on the nasdaq we're just simply riding the 50 simple moving average like we have been over the past couple of months now let's say we pull back on the nasdaq the level i'm going to be looking at in terms of a support level is going to be roughly 77.25 5.77.30, right around 130 points below from where we are now. Are we going to pull back 130 points? Am I saying that? Absolutely not, guys. I am not saying that, especially with how tech stocks are looking right now. Apple's reporting soon. You know, this is a tech-heavy index. This can push the way these companies are looking. We'll, we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. This can very well push the NASDAQ into the $8,000 level over the next couple of weeks. That is something that is very, very possible. So I'm not going to be here calling a pullback on the NASDAQ. Maybe we pull back 50 points, but I personally think we're going to continue to push up and test 8,000 points over the next couple of weeks. Don't, don't hold me to that. Don't hold me to that. But that is just what I'm thinking right now, guys, based on the movements of some of these stocks, these larger cap stocks. So in terms of the NASDAQ, that is what I'm looking at, guys. Overall, the market today, Nothing crazy, nothing crazy, just a simple pullback. We're looking to push up from this pullback for an all-time high in the NASDAQ, or rather the Dow, and an all-time high in the S&P 500. So in terms of my trading, guys, today, I'm not going to lie to you. I honestly didn't do much because I was waiting for today, today's earnings reports in Facebook, Tesla, right? We talked about Visa, PayPal, Amazon. These were some earnings reports that I was waiting and I wanted to see before potentially trading these stocks tomorrow, right? Which in terms of tomorrow, that is Thursday, the 25th of April in 2019. So you guys saw in yesterday's video that I was actually in Procter and Gamble, which is a swing trade that I'm currently in with about 75 shares. And that's the only one that I'm currently in right now, right? Procter and Gamble did pretty well today up 0.5%, up 53 cents, a nice little recovery day, bounce day off the 180 SMA. Everything is looking pretty solid here for a recovery on Procter & Gamble. We're seeing a bullish cross. The 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA. That's looking pretty solid, right? The 50 SMA was acting as a resistance over that day. Yesterday when they reported earnings, the fact that we broke out of that, we broke out of both of the moving average resistances, this is a very good sign that Procter & Gamble wants to continue this push up. Not only that, guys, we also have been forming higher highs, higher lows here, and we closed on a nice little upswing here towards the end of the market. This is telling me, this is giving me an indication, the pattern is telling me here that we are reversing to the upside. So there's honestly not much to talk about here on Procter & Gamble. They simply fell, in my personal opinion, due to a weak Gillette performance and one of the segments in their baby uh, unit 
Uh, their baby business did poor as well, but they are looking to ramp up some new products in Gillette. Hopefully, this does end up stimulating some growth in that segment, which, in my opinion, will do great for the stock long term. But since they beat on EPS, guys, they beat on revenue, the overall earnings were Pretty solid on Procter & Gamble. We dipped. We confirmed the bounce on the 180 SMA. These were all incentives in my eyes to hop into it as a swing trade. It's a blue chip company. I'm looking at this more as a safe swing trade. No stock in the stock market is 100% risk-free, 100% safe. But Procter & Gamble, guys, being a blue chip, you know, this is one that I feel pretty comfortable, you know, swing trading on this rebound. Who knows? I can be 100% wrong. Um, you know, no one really knows. And if I am wrong here, I do plan on cutting losses. If we break this 180 simple moving average here on the 184 hour chart. So in terms of you know, a trading update. That's really it, guys. I'm really waiting for tomorrow to do some more swing trading. There's one in particular that we're going to be talking about soon in this video that I'm looking to swing trade. So stay tuned for that. Now I'm going to pull out my Facebook. Oh my goodness, guys. I just got a notification from Robinhood. Facebook is at $200 per share right now. This is absolutely unbelievable. Let's just talk about, you know, what is going on right now with Facebook stock. The earnings call is happening at the time that I'm recording this video. So I'm assuming Mark Zuckerberg, one of the leaders, one of the executives said something that's very positive. It's causing the stock to push up even higher. And I'm going to just listen to that after I record this video, probably a rerun, which doesn't bother me, guys. I don't have to listen to it real time. That doesn't really bother me. But if we go to Facebook, we'll see Oh my goodness, guys, $202 per share. This is this is a real-time reaction right now. This is unbelievable. I actually had a feeling that Facebook was going to pop heavily today, and I was right, guys. So let's just hop into what they ended up reporting in terms of earnings. So EPS, guys, was $0.85 cents versus the 161 expected by Wall Street. So you may be asking yourself, they missed heavily on earnings per share, and they did, guys, because Facebook actually set aside $3 billion, which was taking out, taken out of their EPS in anticipation of the biggest fine ever from U.S. regulators over the privacy concerns. So the fine right now is expected to be $3 billion, but it can range up to $5 billion. This fine was due to the investigation of Facebook after the Cambridge Analytica scandal due to violating 2011 consent decree on user privacy. So this is actually the biggest fine in I think history if I if I recall. Yes, that is the biggest fine in history guys and for those of you guys that don't know Cambridge Analytica was a scandal where millions of people's data right? Their data was taken without their consent. So if Facebook, which is why in my personal opinion, Facebook stock is flying, let's say Facebook didn't have to pay this $3 billion fine if that wasn't in their earnings per share. Take a look at what their EPS would have been, guys. It would have been $1.89, which absolutely blows away analysts' expectations of $1.61, which is is why the stock, in my opinion, is reacting as positively as it is now. Quite frankly, investors out there, they don't really give a crap about this one-time fine because Facebook, let's be honest, they're making billions of billions of billions of dollars of profit. They see what the EPS would have been, which is a metric that, honestly, I'm looking at as an investor. A lot of people out there as investors are looking at. We don't really care about the fine, right? We know this is a one-time thing. Hopefully, it doesn't happen again. And the EPS is just looking super, super strong, which is what people are focusing on right now. Absolutely unbelievable, guys. Let's just go to the one day, one minute before we talk about revenue here. Let's take a look from 182, guys. It's up 10%. My long-term holding on Facebook, it's going to be up a crap ton of money tomorrow if these levels do end up staying at 200, which I don't know if they will. We might see a pullback, but at this point, guys, up 10% after hours. 
hours. Absolutely unbelievable. So revenue came in at $15.08 billion versus $14.97 billion expected by analysts. That's an 8% year-over-year growth. Some other metrics that we like to look at, $2.38 billion in terms of monthly active users versus $2.375 billion expected. $1.56 billion daily active users. And, and uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually came out saying that he is focused on building out a privacy-focused vision for the future of social networking, which is something huge in my personal opinion. Again, with the Cambridge Analytica, all these data scandals, you know, the privacy thing on Facebook is huge. And I'm sure it's, it's really obvious that Mark is working on this. This is obviously the future of Facebook to be more secure. This is something that I love hearing as an investor. And he's working collaboratively, collaboratively that's a very tongue twisting word right there, to address important issues around the internet so overall guys Facebook's earnings report blew it out of the water in my personal opinion right and if we're just hopping here to live news to see if we can see anything um you know anything new that came out so we can see yeah the five billion dollar fine there that that could be the peak of it three billion dollars for sure you see okay the revenue okay okay eight percent growth year over year we see that so that's pretty much it guys in terms of facebook stock and their you know brief earnings numbers we see the stocks at two hundred dollars oh my goodness guys the fact that i was loading up on shares all throughout october to december it's making me really happy right now because that position in the morning is roughly going to be up like 40 30 percent which is absolutely unbelievable let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think about facebook are we going to maintain these levels i would love to know what you guys have to think so if we're just staying on facebook now for what stocks i'm looking to trade let's just go to some long-term resistance levels on facebook that it seems like we are breaking out of right now <coughs> so the resistance that we are seeing is at about 185 to 190. We obviously broke out of that level of resistance. So let me get this drawing tool very quickly to see some new levels right now that we may be facing. So this 192 level from back in July of 2018, a support level from back then, we obviously broke out of that level as well. The next spot that it's, it's looking like we're testing right now is $203 per share. So as of now, after market hours guys and probably into tomorrow this is where we're going to be trading between $193 per share to $200 so this is the new channel I'm looking for Facebook are we going to end up getting rejected by 203 maybe start to sell off to 193 which is that support level are we going to maintain this this horizontal level this is something I'm going to be watching tomorrow for a potential swing trade especially on this amazing in my personal opinion amazing earnings report so let's hop to tesla guys because they actually reported earnings as well i didn't have time to digest their earnings because i started filming this video but i did see that they reported a negative eps if i do remember correctly let me just hop over here and we can see if we just zoom in here uh, on the live news tab let's see let's see let's see Okay, guys, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where is that? Okay, here we go. So EPS, negative $2.90, misses the negative $0.66 cents earnings estimate that was expected. So that's pretty bad in terms of EPS on Tesla. Total sales, $4.5 billion versus $5.4 billion expected. So in terms of the two major metrics, EPS, revenue, Tesla ended up missing on both of those and the stock right now while well, it initially reacted to a pretty big dump from the close 258 close we dumped down at $250 flat but it seems like we've rebounded we hit 266 now we're hovering right where we ended up closing um you know today right about 20 30 or really an hour and 40 minutes wow guys time does fly when i'm analyzing these reports but an hour and 40 minutes ago we closed roughly right where we are right now on tesla stock so to be honest guys 
I don't know. I really can't predict. Honestly, no one can predict what Tesla stock is going to do, but maybe it goes lower tomorrow due to this bad earnings report at the open, at the bell. That's when we're going to know the direction of Tesla, right? If we see some aggressive sell-off in the morning, maybe heading back to the 250 level, you know, that's going to be a sign that the bears are taking over. We're going to be testing that 247, 250 level of support. Again, if we break that, that's going to be such a bearish sign on Tesla at that point. I'm going to be pretty scared. I might add some shares on my long-term portfolio as a more speculative position, but in terms of swing trading, guys, I'm not going to be touching Tesla. I've said this numerous times on my videos here on the channel. I am not touching Tesla unless, until rather, we break out of these moving average resistances, guys. In terms of my strategy, guys, and in terms of what I'm seeing on a technical basis here, there's no reason... And there's no sound logical reason with data-driven facts to trade Tesla unless it breaks these levels. It's, it just doesn't make sense to me, right? Why would I hop into Tesla here hoping it breaks out until it actually does break out, until we actually get that breakout pattern, right? So just to be honest, that's what I'm waiting for, right? If we break out of these levels, maybe in a couple of days, maybe in a couple of weeks after this earnings report is digested, if we see the price starting to pop up, that could be a potential trade but as of now i see better options including procter and gamble facebook because both of those had pretty solid earnings reports so another one i want to talk about here is ticker symbol v ticker symbol v visa guys and this is one that just reported earnings as well i didn't really digest their earnings as in depth as i did with facebook but i think they did report some pretty decent earnings if we're just going down here so we can see Yes, they did report pretty decent earnings. EPS was a dollar thirty-one versus the one hundred uh, one dollar and twenty-four estimate. So they beat on EPS and they also beat on sales with five point four nine billion versus five point four six billion. So this is honestly in the same situation as Procter and Gamble, right? A larger cap company reported some solid earnings. They pulled back on the earnings report, maintaining the moving moving average support levels on the longer term charts, which this one is, and same thing with Procter & Gamble. It's maintaining this 50 SMA here. So tomorrow morning, if we do see it's maintaining this 160 level, 161, this could be, in my personal opinion, a good swing trade for the rest of this week, heading into the May month. I want to see, though, I want to get the 100% confirmation that we are maintaining this level. And let's say we get in, it's not crazy upside, to be completely honest with you guys. It's about 2% up to the previous resistances, but the key here... Here is if we continue the uptrend, maybe we get to 164, 165. That's when we start to get some pretty solid gains of three, four, five percent if it continues this move upwards. So as of now, guys, swing trading wise, Visa, Procter and Gamble, they are both at the top of my list. No doubt about it. So that's pretty much it in terms of swing trading. AMD is also one. That's looking like it's breaking out a bit here. We're finally starting to see a hold above that $28 level of support. If you guys recall, I was talking about AMD, how it was trading vigorously between 27 and 28. It did not like that 28 level. It dipped below that about three, four times. We can see here it dipped. Here it dipped. Here it briefly dipped, but we popped back up, which is why I am liking the level that AMD is at right now. But I am approaching it with caution because we have an earnings report in about six days from now on the 30th of April. So I'm most likely going to be waiting until after they report earnings before hopping into AMD. But it's definitely one that's looking like it's breaking out into the $28.50, potentially the $29 level here over the next couple of days. So that's in terms of stocks, all that I'm watching heading into tomorrow, let's just take a look at Amazon very quickly because they also reported earnings today. If we go to the live news, we can see what they ended up reporting. If I can see it here, guys, let's see. Are they not uploaded here on the live news? That would be very shocking if it wasn't uploaded here. Um, okay, I guess Amazon is not here on the earnings report. Um, okay, or did they not report earnings today? Am I, am I making a huge mistake? 
Oh, their earnings are tomorrow, guys. Apologize for that. That's a pretty big mistake on my part. I think PayPal was the one that reported earnings. Let's see how that stock is reacting as of right now. Okay, we got a pretty nice dump there to 103. Gap fill up to 109. If we can see their earnings report very quickly. PayPal sees, okay, their EPS was... Okay, if we just zoom down a bit, we can see. Okay, they reported EPS roughly uh, 0.68 to 0.70 versus 69 estimated. So that's roughly in line with the analysts. And sales of 4.3 to 4.34 versus 4.37 uh, estimated. So they missed a bit on sales. Not too good of a sign there. The stock reacted to that, I'm assuming, down to about 103, but we gap filled up. So this is one that could be a potential play tomorrow. Ticker symbol PYP. L guys. So that is what I'm watching guys. You know, I'm very excited honestly about Facebook. That's the, the key takeaway of today's video. I'm going to hop off this video. I'm going to see if I can catch the tail end here of the conference call. It might be over at this point. I'm not too sure if it is. I'm probably going to find it online. I'm going to rewind it and watch it from the beginning to see what ended up being a catalyst for Facebook to pop it up into the $200 level because when I was watching it before recording this video it was at about 193 or something like that and we can see right now it is falling down a bit 198 so i would love to know what you guys think about facebook please drop a comment down below talk to me about it guys talk to me about it so i'm going to end the video off right here guys if you enjoyed the video feel free to hit that like button drop a comment subscribe to the channel if you're new hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that i do make a video i'll catch you all in the next video i appreciate every single one of you guys watching it means a lot to me peace out good luck tomorrow i'll talk to you guys soon